right, so Springfield Armory says that the XDM comes with everything you need in the box for a competition gun. I brought this gun out today to the IDPA match, and I'm going to shoot this local IDPA match with just what comes in this box and, of course, ammunition, and I'm supplying the belt. Otherwise, that's it. All right, so we've got our holster, our mag pouch, our mag loader, pistol, magazines. So I'm just going to put on the holster. And there you have it. The Springfield Armory XDM 5.25 is a gun that I want so badly to love. After all, there's truly so much about this gun to love. So many people swear by them. Kind of makes you feel like you're the one idiot that doesn't get the joke everyone's laughing at if you don't love it too. But I just don't love it yet. Why? Because I don't shoot it very well. So first off, you can shoot a match with just what comes in the box very easily. I've done it a couple times now. Nobody packages a handgun like Springfield, something I think others should learn from. Accuracy is excellent, as is the sight picture and recoil management. If my eyesight was still 20 years old, I'd feel like I could shoot the fly off a pig's ear at 100 yards and not even hear a squeal. To hold this pistol and look at it is to experience that sort of confidence, but for me, all that goes away the moment the timer starts and I start shooting it. The ergonomics are okay pretty good in many ways. They're not the best, but they're definitely not the worst. I use the smallest back strap on this pistol, but the other options included can be installed easily to customize the fit. With the small back strap on and a talon grip wrapped over it, I have a little bit of an investment there, so it's not easy for me to change it at this point. I have wondered though if the larger size might provide a different angle of ergonomics and might also affect the trigger and mag release. The magazine release on this pistol is kind of like the brake pedal on a 1944 school bus going down a mountain road. It's tough to reach and then you have to stand on it and pray it works. My mag changes with this gun can be measured with a sundial. Actually, magazine release and the ability to perform fast reloads are probably the thing that hurts me the most with this pistol. The bore axis on this gun is higher than a Glock, maybe even a little higher than a Smith & Wesson M&P, but the recoil spring is heavy and compensates for that pretty well. The downside is if you load really light ammo and you flirt with the power floor, when the gun's new you might experience some cycling problems. I had some early problems with a few of my really light hand loads. The recommendation is to increase your pressure accordingly, or the best advice for breaking in the pistol is just use factory ammo. So I'm approaching the thousand round mark with this gun, and why don't I shoot it well? I don't completely know the answer to that yet. If I did, I would fix it, right? Uh, but I do have some thoughts. Number one, ergonomics. First and foremost, I think the grip angle is challenging for me. Some people like it, some people don't. You know, that's a subjective thing. That's all down to personal taste and what you're used to. To me, it's much, it's much closer to a 90 degree angle than most of the other guns I compete with. My draw always feels a little bit awkward, even after thousands of reps. And it takes me longer to get my sight picture on the target. Once I do, it rocks, but I lose a lot of time with that. Number two, reloads. I've already mentioned my dislike for the magazine release. and I don't want to be too harsh on it. It's about the size and shape of a 1911 magazine release but it's very stiff. It's a little awkward to reach and to get to. Most of the other guns that I shoot seriously with allow me to use the inside edge of my thumb to operate the control and drop the mag. But the XDM control is harder to reach, meaning I have to alter my grip a lot more than usual, and it's very firm. So instead of being able to just squeeze my hand and use the inside of my thumb on the button, I have to press the end of my thumb almost straight into the button. The extra motion and time required to do this is really incredible. I can feel my beard growing while I do a reload. Number three, the trigger. I know a lot of people dislike the XDM trigger and they drop in a powder river replacement 
you know, maybe even before they go shoot the gun. I think there's a lot of people out there that just feel like they have to change the trigger on everything they shoot regardless. I may eventually replace the trigger too, um, but I do want to work with the factory trigger for a long time before I do that. I won't replace it just for fashion. I do find that the XDM trigger is a little on the soft side, a little squishy, and the stroke is a little long. It resets much longer than my Glock or my Walther, which causes me to slap the trigger a little bit, or just plain miscalculate and re-engage on a dead trigger, having not extended far enough to get a reset. The first makes me shoot less accurately, and the latter adds time to my score. What it really means is I need to train more exclusively with the XDM, and I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to do that. So all this probably sounds like a whole lot of complaining, but it really is only a few things that bug me. You know, I really can boil it down to just a couple of items. There are many more things I like about the XDM 5.25 than I dislike. Here are some of the things that I particularly do like. Number one, the sights. I love the sight picture. The blackout rear with the anti-glare serrations and the brightly glowing fiber optic front sight provide a fast and focused sight picture to your target. The rear sight is fully adjustable for elevation and windage. The slide stop controls, which are ambidextrous, but I'm only using the one on the left side of the pistol, the right handers, very well placed, very well designed. Easy to reach, easy to operate, and this can save fractions of seconds from your time at every match. Also it makes it easier and safer to lock the slide back manually, so if you want to show a clear gun or you just want to check your gun. It's a little easier and safer to keep it pointed down range while you do that. Accuracy is excellent with this pistol. My rapid fire match shooting might be suffering, but slow deliberate fire produces fantastic results. If I'm taking my time, or if I put it on a rest with reliable ammunition, this gun will eat a one ragged hole in the middle of a target. Fit and finish are exceptional. Particularly with the bitone finish, the look and the feel of this gun is top shelf. Tool marks, finish imperfections, misaligned parts, roughly molded polymer, none of that is to be found on the XDM. All the stampings and roll marks on the slide are clean, well defined. This gun would not look out of place in a display case. And even the coolness factor, the coolness of this design. Yeah, I'll admit that the aesthetics are a factor. Springfield nailed it with the aggressive look and feel, but they made it functional. It's not all just for show. I think they did a really good job with the look of this gun. How about capacity? 19 plus 1. If they made it any greater capacity, the short people would have to stand on something to shoot it. But it's not a concealed carry pistol, so there's no trade-off. More definitely is better, and I don't mind the longer magazine. I still feel strongly that the XDM 5.25 is a good value, and it's a very good gun, but I still don't shoot it particularly well. Not horrible, but I definitely know I could shoot a lot better than I'm shooting with this gun. Part of that is because I shoot many, so many different guns all the time that I have to retune my muscle memory for each different one. I admit that, and so a lot of that is me. Uh, but some of these guns tune in much faster than the XDM does. Now with all that said, I'm going to press on. I'm going to put in the effort. Maybe in another couple thousand rounds, I'll have an update.